good morning once again and welcome back to my channel my name is doris there is a word that i released a video that i released on the word beware it is a spirit of mockery and i gave an insight on this spirit the way the lord gave it to me in this video i just want to do a very brief teaching on this spirit so that we can have a better understanding on how this spirit operates, how it attacks, which areas of your life it attacks, and how to counter it. Because so many people are under attack from this spirit in this hour. So before we get to the word, let us have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I glorify your name, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for yet another opportunity that you have given me to share your word with your people. Lord, I don't take it for granted, but I take it as a privilege. And I pray, my Father, that this word is going to be a blessing. This word is going to be an encouragement and a revelation to somebody. May you anoint your word, Lord, even as I release it, that whoever is going to hear this word, my Father, they shall hear that which you are saying to them in this hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We are going to read from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2 and verses 6. It says, And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall your journey be? And when shall thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I said him at time. Verses 10 says, When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobias the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. And verses 19 says, But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the unknown Anamite, and Geshem, the Arabian heard it. They laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? Chapter 14, verses 1 to 2 says, And it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wrought and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heap of the rubbish when it is, when it is burnt? I usually love to teach even more than to prophesy because teaching gives you understanding, teaching gives you revelation, it gives you insight and it gives you knowledge. The word of God says to knowledge at understanding. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The word of God says that through knowledge shall the just be delivered study to show yourself approved there's so much emphasis in scripture on acquiring knowledge and understanding so it is always important to understand how things work in the spirit the only way that the enemy is able to have an upper hand in your life is through your ignorance and he always wants to make sure that he keeps the truth from you as much as possible he always tries to hide the truth so that you can keep on living in ignorance many of us are between a closed door and an open door and you are in this place a hallway of sorts you can't go back from where you came from you have burnt all the bridges and you are yet to walk through the open door that is before you and this is a very it can be a very frustrating place to be in and it is in this place that the enemy will always rise up with an attack on your mind to sow seeds of doubt, to sow seeds of unbelief, to sow offense in your life. He wants to sow frustration, he wants to sow disappointment and the enemy wants you to be resentful towards God. All the arrows that the enemy is, is throwing at you right now is specifically and strategically targeted on your mind. The enemy is hoping that you will quit. He is hoping that you will give up. The enemy is hoping that you will give in back down and back off. The spirit of Sanballat and Tobiah 
the spirit of mockery will always come at you when you are weak, when you are drained mentally, when you are drained emotionally, when you are exhausted spiritually and physically. Remember, the nature of this spirit is that it is a coward and it will never show up in your life when you are strong. This spirit is called an enemy because it is an enemy of the children of God and of God. When this spirit comes at you, it always comes with a lot of intensity. intensity. Its attack is always very intense because it shows up right at the age of your breakthrough. When you are just a about to break through that is the time that that spirit shows up because it, it this spirit understands that by this time you are battle weary you are exhausted and when you are exhausted you are not able to process your mind is not able to process clearly what is going on around you so it is very easy for you to be derailed to be distracted the devil never wants you to live a successful and fruitful life it is an intimidation to him it works against his kingdom and that's why he always wants to make sure that he controls you he oppresses you he wants to make sure that he always keeps you in fear whatever the Whatever that the enemy is saying to you is contrary to what God is doing in your life. His attack against you is a confirmation of your advancement and your progress. Prophecy is good. Prophetic word is good because it warns us, it corrects us, it rebukes us. The prophecy, it encourages, it strengthens, it edifies. But if you have no knowledge, if you have no understanding of the spiritual realm or how to walk out the prophetic, the enemy will always come in, hijack the promise, hide, withhold the promise. Remember, the enemy's agenda is always to steal, kill, and to destroy. And at the end of the day, you will end up with prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, but no manifestation. And you become offended with God. You become angry with God. You will even become frustrated with the servants of God and think that they are false prophets. There are seven areas that I want to touch on. As revealed in this scripture concerning this spirit, how it attacks the, the Jews, so that you can see how it relates to your to your life. Number one, Sanballat and Tobias was grieved that the Jews had somebody to help them. It always grieves the devil that your divine connections and your destiny helpers have been released. So when the spirit shows up, understand that God has released your divine connections. God has released your destiny helpers in your life. Number two, Sanballat and Tobias try to intimidate the Jews, telling them that they were they were rebelling against the king and it is the king himself who had authorized Nehemiah to build. The enemy will always try to sow seeds of doubt and fear in your life to intimidate you and when, and when you see this happening in your life, know that you are advancing, know that you are progressing. Number three, Sanballat and Tobias mocked the Jews that they were feeble. The enemy is trying to intimidate you that what you are doing is not important, is not it's, it is not relevant. What you are doing, you are not able to. The enemy is attacking your purpose. The enemy attacks your assignment. The enemy wants to make sure that you don't you don't pursue purpose you don't pursue destiny and when you see this happening know that that is exactly what is happening in your life number four Sanballat and Tobias mocked the Jews whether they will fortify the enemy will mock your authority remember that it is God who has authorized you to fortify that promise so when the enemy starts challenging your authority, it is exactly the opposite of what is happening in your life. God has already, 
God has already authorized you to fortify that promise. Number five, Sanballat and Tobias mocked the Jews that they will not be able to sacrifice. The enemy wants to confuse you so that you don't sacrifice. Because the enemy knows that once you sacrifice, he cannot stop you. You must give a sacrifice of praise despite what is happening in your life, despite what is going on. You must say like Peter, Lord, I have told all night and come out empty, but at your word, I will cast my net again. I am tired. I am exhausted. The time is not even right, Lord. I don't understand how this is going to work out. I've already done this before, but at your word, Lord, when you come to that level and you say, Lord, I will pray again. Lord, I will intercede again. I will cast that net. I will decree again. I will declare again. I will confess your word, Lord. I will sow seed, Lord. I don't know what is going on, Lord, but at your word, Lord, that is a sacrifice that the enemy cannot counter. So when the enemy challenges you, whether you'll be able to sacrifice, know that you are sacrificing unto the Lord. Number six, son. Sanballat and Tobias mocked the Jews. If they will make an end in a day, the enemy is mocking you whether you will finish what you started. The enemy is questioning whether you will continue to contend for that promise. Will you continue to contend for the healing? Will you continue to contend for that marriage? Will you continue to contend for that promotion, for that restoration, for that deliverance? Remember, the promises of God is yes and amen. And when the enemy challenges you in this area, you are contending and you are making headway. And that is why he wants to distract you. Number seven, Sanballat and Tobias mocked the Jews whether they will revive the stone out of the heap of the rubbish when they are burnt. The enemy is mocking your promise of restoration. He wants you to believe that the restoration Restoration will not come. Restoration is not possible. But remember, we serve a God of restoration because his word says that he shall restore the years that the concomops, the locusts, and the caterpillars ate. So your restoration is coming. And the, when the enemy attacks you in this area, know that your restoration has been released. So that is the word that I have for you today. I hope that it blesses you. I, I hope that it builds you. I hope that it, it gives you even more understanding and more revelation on how to counter this spirit when it shows up in your life. I love you guys so much and I thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for sharing and liking my videos. You are helping me to preach this gospel and to send this gospel to the nations. I thank you for all of you who are sowing into this ministry, who are giving into this ministry. May the Lord abundantly bless you. Thank you for your comments and your emails. They are a great encouragement and a blessing to me. Even the testimonies that you are sending to me, they really bless me. God is working in the lives of many people there are so many testimonies that i'm receiving of of what god is doing in the lives of people and i am so encouraged and remember that your father loves you with an everlasting love and there is nothing that can separate you from his love which is in christ jesus i am praying for you and i am praying with you and may the lord bless you